I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you're here spending some time with me. I wanted to talk today about taking vacation. And the reason that I want to talk about this today is because I am taking one. (laughs) I'm taking one. And I've taken vacation before, but I've always taken work with me. And recently, I've realized a few things about the benefits of taking vacation and not working at the same time. And I want to take you through a bit of a chronology as I'm thinking through this live here with you about vacation before, what it meant to me, and vacation now and what it means to me and also to my work. And I'm hoping that you can relate to the way that I felt, the way that I feel, or some aspect of it, and that this helps you to think about and reflect on the role of vacation or taking extended breaks in your life. And so first, I want to start off by defining what it is that I mean by vacation. So when we're talking about vacation, I don't mean that you need to go, you know, somewhere extravagant and, you know, spend all of this money and do something that, you know, you feel is indulgent and spend time and money doing something that doesn't necessarily feel in alignment with what you want, but is this sort of societal, the socially accepted vacation in quotes or the the type of vacation that we see on TV or that we see in the movies. And so while we, many of us, I won't say all, while many of us wish that we could just hop over to a beach or down south, I'm in Toronto, so down south for me, there's a long way to go. It doesn't necessarily only mean those sorts of vacations, going somewhere hot with beaches, maybe an all-inclusive. It also means you can take time exactly where you are. You can have a staycation, right? You don't even have to leave your borders. You can find somewhere within your borders and within your budget. You can rent an Airbnb by yourself or with some friends or with some family or whoever you enjoy spending time with. You could take a road trip. There are so many things that you could do that are low budget that don't require getting on a plane or, you know, escaping your, you know, even country. There are so many options for taking breaks or extended breaks from your day to day that don't require you to break the bank and also that don't require you to do something that you don't want to do. So you don't need to go on a certain kind of vacation or take some kind of extended break that somebody else wants to take. You can decide the kind of break that you want to take. So I'll just reflect for a moment on what vacations have meant to me and how that has evolved over time. I've been really lucky and privileged that growing up, my family was able to go on really an annual vacation altogether where we'd all get on a plane, we'd go somewhere hot and we would be together in this place for anywhere from, you know, five days to a week. And for so many of those vacations, I was excited to go, but I also was a bit frustrated because I had so much work to do. And so what I would always do, and I just actually spoke with one of my friends about this the other week who told me that I don't know how to take a break. So if you're listening, (laughs) this episode I dedicate to you. And so on all of these vacations, I would always take my laptop and whatever papers I needed in order to do some work and actually feel like I was being productive. And so if you can just imagine, so right now it's 2022. And so we're talking, you know, when I was doing my master's back in 2011. So this is over 10 years ago. Oh my gosh. Wi-Fi was not, it was just becoming a thing on resorts down South. And so the stress that I went through to make sure that I had access to Wi-Fi and the, probably the amount that I annoyed my parents to, 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 
make sure that wherever we were going had Wi-Fi because I had things to do. I had emails to respond to. I was teaching at the time. I had students. I had several supervisors who I whose requirements I had to satisfy. And the thing is, is when I was going through grad school, I was so fixated on answering emails basically immediately because if I missed the window of time or I felt that if I missed the window of time where my supervisors were like in that frame of mind where they were answering my email and I received an email from them, I'd have to respond immediately because otherwise they'd be busy and they wouldn't get back to me for a long time. That wasn't true of many of my supervisors. It was true of one that I can think of, but that's another story for another day. So I always thought that I had to be responding immediately. And for me, that was an indication that I was taking the steps that I needed to to progress by answering questions, by providing additional information if they required it while they were reviewing one of my chapters, for example, in you know either a thesis or a dissertation that I was writing. Like to the point that if my supervisors were in another time zone, I would make sure that if I received an email from them when they were awake in that time zone, that I was also available at that time to answer the email while they were awake in that time zone. Like that is how focused I was on progressing and not wasting time. I didn't want to wait those, you know, 12 or 24 hours for a response if there was a chance that I could get a response sooner. And thankfully, my committees were amazing and they responded very quickly. And it's it's only because of my committees and the people who were on them supervising and advising me that I was able to finish in the time that I did because they they allowed me to because they they really worked at my pace, which was quick. And I so appreciate that to this day. I mean, the amount of work that my committees put in for me to finish successfully and on my timeline when I wanted to finish is is something that I'm so grateful for to this day. But back to emails. And I think that this is a salient point just to be talking about anyway, because we are all connected to our phones constantly. Even when I was on vacation, whether that was somewhere within Ontario or whether that was in another province or whether that was down south, I always was attached to my email, without fail, attached to my email. And I either had a data package or a Wi-Fi. I made sure wherever I was going had Wi-Fi or a roaming package or whatever the case was, I always made sure that I had it. And I still do, but for different reasons. But then it was because of work and I wanted not to miss anything and I didn't need a break, I thought. And so if you saw me at a resort that we were on on vacation, I had my laptop there. And if I was on the beach, so was my laptop. If I was by the pool, so was my laptop. I, you know, shut it down to have meals with my family and, you know, to do other things. I wasn't I wasn't just, you know, doing work the whole time, but I did do a lot of work on vacations. Before bed, I would, you know, go back to the room and I would be working. I would be doing my data collection or my data analysis or my interpretation or whatever it was. Like, I remember just, (laughs) I remember just in case the Wi-Fi didn't work one day back at home in order to prepare for all of this work that I was going to do on vacation. I also printed out my spreadsheets for my data collection on paper so that I could still do the data collection if my, if the Wi-Fi was out. So I would also have saved PDFs of everything that I was collecting data on. And, and I was, I, I was able to work whether or not there was Wi-Fi. And I did. And I remember sitting by the pool at this one vacation with all of these sheets of paper that I was sure to staple together because what if the wind blew and, you know, whatever. And so I was always working, always, always, always working. And that's how, for me, that's how I was able to finish my master's in 12 months and my PhD in just under four years and then move straight into law school. And so looking back, I really didn't understand the benefits of taking a break because I never did. Really, to be completely honest with you, I've never, even to this day, and this maybe is embarrassing to admit publicly, but maybe not more embarrassing than other things I've admitted on this podcast publicly. But to this day, I still take my laptop with me wherever I go, whether it's on vacation, whether it's up north, whether it's, you know, wherever it is, my laptop is with me and my phone is like a backup for that. But obviously you can't be as productive on your phone as you can with a laptop. One of the points that I'm trying to make is that we really have to figure out 
and understand. And this conversation would have been so valuable to me as a student. What is the value of vacation or taking a break or extended break? Because I like, again, I don't mean that we need to spend all this money, especially over the last two years where we've had various lockdowns and is it safe or isn't it safe to travel? Some of us feel comfortable on a plane, some of us don't. And so sometimes that those sort of bigger vacations that we had envisioned taking might not be an option right now for some of us. And so really a vacation, what I'm talking about is an extended concerted break from your day to day in order to give yourself some respite and recovery from the day-to-day stressors. Even if you love your job, I love what I do. I love, love, love running my two companies. I love running my law firm and I love running Apply Yourself the Advancement Spot. And still we need to recharge because in order for me to serve you, I need to be my best. I need to be not burnt out. I need to be able to serve with my highest skill and my highest ability. And so that means that sometimes we need to take real breaks. And that's really hard because on the flip side of it, and I'm sure that many of you can relate, on the flip side of it, my brain also doesn't shut off. It's always thinking. I'm always thinking. Even as I'm falling asleep at night, I'm thinking. There's always more. I'm thinking about this option or that option or this client or that client or this program or that. What are the options here? Where are we going? How are like how are we continuing to serve? What is the impact that that we want to have? How is our mission being brought to life every single day? And these are all things that are so important to me. And so my brain doesn't shut off. What that means is that we need to take conscious time. We need to consciously take time to reflect on what it is that we're doing, to reflect on the kind of break that we need and what it is that we're going to do on that break. So At the time of this recording, right now, it's the middle of summer 2022, and I'm taking off a few weeks in August. I do have a few commitments that I couldn't move around during those two weeks, so I will still be doing just a teeny bit of work, but those are mostly live meetings that I can't reschedule. But other than that, I'm really planning on taking that time off. And those days that I'm taking completely off consecutively will be the longest duration of time that I will ever have taken a break from work. So I think it's important to also understand, and again, this would have been a really salient and important conversation for me to have with someone who would have been saying these things to me as a student, is that giving your brain time to rest and do other things that you enjoy, use different parts of your brain to give those working parts of your brain a rest is actually going to help you be more creative at work, more productive at work, and enjoy work even more than you currently do. And that's possible. It's always possible to enjoy something more, right? Even if you love something, it's possible to love it more or enjoy it more. So this concept of vacation, and actually it's not just about where you are right? It's also about what you're doing. It's not just about me being on a beach somewhere. It's about me being on a beach somewhere, you know, back then, being able to actually relax and not sit there typing, right? Not sit there doing data analysis. So the question is also, what are you doing on those vacations or those extended breaks, whatever it is that you decide to do? So for these few weeks that I'm taking off in August, I'm not going anywhere extravagant. I'm going up north. We're going to Montreal to visit family. But that is a break from my regular day to day. And it's giving me family time. It's giving me time to do other things with my family than work. And it's giving me the ability to just relax, right? I'm not planning on being heavily digital while I'm there, whether if whether that means TV or on the phone or whatever it is. I'm really planning on using that time for restoration. So I think that it's important that we reconceptualize what it is that we think of vacation, especially for all of the high achievers out there who can relate to my need to always work and really reflect on what it means 
to take a break, what it means for you, what it means for your body, what it means for your brain, what it means for your relationships with the people around you, and what it means for your own personal and professional development, growth, advancement. Because if we don't take this time, and I'm not saying you need to take a week or two weeks, I'm saying even a few days here and there, like a few days, maybe like every few months or every quarter, it doesn't mean that you need to, like I said at the very beginning, it doesn't mean that you need to be spending all this money. What it means is you may just need to like take a few days off and recharge, take a few days off around those long weekends to extend those weekends into, you know, four or five day weekends and really be really intentional about how you're spending that time. Because here's the thing, if we let the stress get to us, if we let that stress get to us the day to day, because even if you love what you're doing, there's always stress, right? There's always the stress of the day to day. That stress, the workload will eventually, if we don't take care of ourselves, will cause burnout. And we've spoken before on this podcast about self-care and what that means. And that you don't have to spend a lot of money in order to practice self-care. Self-care, as I discussed, is the ability to rejuvenate and restore yourself. It's not about the cucumbers on your eyes and the spa days. And listen, if you want to do that, that's great. But it doesn't have to be about that. For you, it could be taking a nice walk. It could be hiking. It could be going to get a coffee. It could be doing some other things that you enjoy. It could be spending time with people you enjoy, or it could be spending time away from certain people, right? Or time away from social media. So I think it's really important that we place actually a really high value on not burning out. And I know that this is sort of a hot topic. Burnout is a very hot topic. But I think because we often use a buzzword like burnout, we mask all of the other potential effects that burnout can cause. So when we burn out, for example, we feel lethargic, we're fatigued, we're tired, we're sick of the day-to-day. You might have less patience for things that otherwise you'd have more patience for. You might have a shorter temper. You may lash out in situations that you may not have lashed out in simply because you're tired you are stressed, there's so much on your plate, you feel overwhelmed. This is all and can all be a result of burnout. And professionally and academically too, I should say, this can damage your progress, it can damage your reputation, it can damage your success. And so what I think is really important to come out of this conversation is that you have a duty to yourself to take that break. You know, humans weren't born to work. Humans actually weren't born to sit in a classroom and take standardized tests and, you know, sit at, you know, in front of a computer for, you know, 12 hours a day. That's not the way that humans evolve. This is the way that industrial capitalist society has evolved, but that's not the way that humans have evolved. And so I think it's also really important to recognize that The point is not to work, to live. The point is to be able to create a life for yourself that you can thrive in, that you enjoy, that you feel aligned with, that you are able to take those breaks if and when you want to, that you're able to create circumstances for yourself that allow you to both enjoy life and enjoy work. And so now vacation means something different to me than it did before. Before, yes, it meant family time. Yes, it meant getting away. But I never conceptualized vacation as something that was restorative, really until now. And so this episode is really quite organic because I'm currently conceptualizing these things. Like I, I think it's important for you to know that as I'm doing this work, I'm also growing, right? I'm growing with you. I don't come to this podcast from a place of preaching. I come very much from a place of relating and being very honest about where I am in my journey as well. And the realizations that I have along the way that I think I would have benefited from 10 years ago. This is one of them. 
So we want to avoid fatigue. We want to avoid stress as much as we can. Certainly, we want to avoid extended periods of stress. We certainly want to avoid burnout. So in addition to making sure that you're doing what it is that you enjoy in life and while you're on this earth, it's also important to conceptualize what it is that will restore you over time. And for you to be able to set boundaries around that. So every X number of months, I'm going to take X number of days off and do something constructive, productive, and restorative. Now, what I mean is constructive and productive in terms of your restoration, not necessarily in terms of your your data collection or your thesis or whatever it is. We all need breaks. And I think that during grad school, I really could have, be- could have benefited from breaks. Certainly during law school, I could have, and certainly now I can too. And I think that everyone can. So hopefully together, we've been able to explore this idea of vacation, what it means. And for anyone out there who is like me or who has been like me, who has not been able to step away from work, I hope that this episode is able to provide you with some insight into why now, with some hindsight, I can say that taking breaks or extended breaks is actually really important for your productivity, for your creativity, and for your restoration. If you want to talk more about this, feel free to send me an email, adrian at applyyourselfglobal.com. And thank you so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Leave this episode a review and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.